Allen the third hasn't won in two years. That ought to be due. Sports desk. Dugan? Who you got loose out there? Sherlock Jones. And do me a favor. Put him on something and take him out of my hair. Even he can cover this. Send him in. Right. Old man wants to see you. Oh, all right. What's this I hear about you not liking to cover sports? Oh, it's not that. I just think I'd make a good crime reporter. Well, here's something a little different. Make a story out of it. What kind? Human interest. Pick the prettiest girl in the line. Why did she leave home? How is she going to get back? A man. Maybe there is no man. Then one. A plumber, a carpenter. Maybe there's a criminal angle back in his ad, something like that. And I'd send a reporter. This is something even a sports writer can do. Beat it. That guy is just dumb enough and stubborn enough to make a swell news hawk someday. Say, look, I... Uh... You seem to be doing the looking. If whatever it is, no. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to get you at all. Try further down the line. I'm not being fresh. Then what are you, a strike picket? No, a newspaper man. I should have guessed that. You don't look intelligent. Ooh. Why be that way? Listen, all I want is a story about you for the paper. Why me? Well, in spite of your disposition, you look interested. What kind of a story? For instance, why are you in this line? Simple. I need a job. What brought you to Hollywood? Also simple. A train. Now, be serious, will you? I am about going to work. If I get this, I'll give you a story. But goodbye now. Well, uh, how about lunch? And lose my spot here? <laughs> Not Casey. You won't get the job anyhow. Come on. Didn't you hear me say goodbye? Oh, uh, lady, how would you like to make two bucks? Huh? I'm glad you said lady. How? What I mean is, hold her place in line for about an hour while we have lunch. One now, one when we come back. Okay, it's a deal. See, it's all fixed. Your place in line is safe and the drugstore is just around the corner. All right, but you're being gypped. I'm hungry. Family said no. Friends said the same. Fiance threatened to marry the banker's daughter. But I came out anyhow. What for? To get in pictures? Sure. Just another one I had I know. There's thousands of them ahead of me. They're waiting on tables, selling cosmetics. And some of them are in that line out there. Well, can't you go home? Well, sure, but I won't. Why? <laughs> How would you like to be a hardware merchant's wife in Cedar Rapids? I'm afraid I couldn't take that without aspirin. How would you like to be pointed out as the greatest girl athlete of the Corn Belt? I couldn't go that even with aspirin. Take a look at this. I want to be a woman, not a female dizzy dean. Led by the mighty Casey, who scored 27 points, Cedar Rapids girls team decisively beat Des Moines for the state championship. Why don't you cash in on this stuff out here? Well, I already told you. I want to be a girl and wear silk stockings and high heel shoes without spikes. I have to work, but at least it can be at something feminine. Well, I don't blame you. Thanks for a swell story. Thanks for the lunch. Say, that hour is up. We haven't had dessert yet. We'll skip it. Oh, waitress, a check and two ice cream cones. Right away. Hiya, Peanuts. Hiya, Jimmy. When are you going to put my picture in the paper? The first time you knock a home run. Oh. Uh, Miss Casey, Peanuts. Uh, Murphy's the last name, Casey. Glad to meet you. Hello. Say, I didn't know Notre Dame had a girls' team. Well, don't be silly. That stands for New Deal. Boy, Harris, the owner here, figures we can make his drugstore famous. He's sponsoring a team? Uh-huh. We'd have a real club. We could find a hot pitcher. I know. Two or three girls haven't signed up yet. Yeah, so do I, but they're not good looking. And Harris here wants a team of nine Miss Americas. The pitcher's got to throw curves and have them, too. I'm still trying to figure out how I made the grade. Well, glad to have met you, Casey. Don't forget to put my picture in the paper. Mine, too. So long, Casey. As soon as you knock home runs, we still get dessert. Sorry, girls, but the position's been filled. Oh. I told you you were wasting your time. I wonder what happened to my stand-in. 
Oh, here she is. Well, never mind the other dollar. I got the job. Oh, I want a story. What's your name? Where do you live? Jane Harmon, 1220 Fountain Avenue. Granite 3621. Goodbye. Thanks. Friend of yours? No, but don't you see the angle? Pinch hitter gets the job. Hundreds turned away. I just see one angle. She got my job, thanks to you. Oh, I'm sorry, Casey. Look, here's my car. Call me at the office. I'll see what I can find down there. When I call you, you'll be stepping on your beard. Well, I've got to beat it now. I'm sorry you missed out. I can see that. Better change your mind and call me at the post. Jimmy Jones. Oh, Mr. Jones. Put that in your story, too. You want to see me, Mr. Brophy? Yes, and I want to talk to you. I want to ask you one simple question. Did you write that? Sure. What's wrong with it? Foy Harris is getting up a team of nine Miss Americans. Did you have to add that he was a former gambling baron of the Middle West? Well, facts are facts. He's the only big shot racketeer I ever heard of who wasn't shot before he could learn to play golf. He now owns one of the best drugstores in this town. That's a legitimate business. Well, how do you know he's legitimate? I don't. And I don't care. That's a police worry. But he buys advertising space in this paper, and he won't if we knock him. That's my worry. Oh, I see. If they advertise, don't write about him, is that it? No. If you can prove that he's in a crooked racket now, that's today's news. Your stuff about him is two years old. Maybe I can. He's got Danny Mascio to manage his team. Who's he? Public enemy number seven? No, a big league ball player saw more doing rackets than in baseball. I'll see what I can dig up for it. You better take that flat-headed photographer of yours, go out to Sunset Field and square this thing with Harris. Now stop playing G-Man and get out of here. How do they look to you, boy? Not a bad-looking bunch. Twenty-five it is, most of them can't play ball. That pitcher's a pretty good-looking prospect. Hit a few. Nice going, kid. You had plenty on that last one. Hello, sugar. What do you think of them? Better than the old bunch we had on the blues. They'll do a lot of winning unless we have to play the Yankees. Put another pitcher in and give that Casey kid a turn at bat. I want Foy to see her hit. Okay. How's she acting? Same as usual. You know what Sue knows could give us an awful headache. It could, but it won't. You mean buy her off? Did you ever hear me buying anybody off? batting practice, Casey. Throw him to the rest of us. Patty. Go on, Pete. Hello, Jimmy. Glad to see you. How are you, Marshall? What's your team look like? Help yourself to an eyeful. I think they look great. Don't know how they play, but Foy wanted them picked like a chorus. Foy Harris, this is Jimmy Jones. One of the ace reporters on the post. Glad to know you, Jimmy. How do you do, Mr. Harris? Nice of you to cover this for us. I remember your name in the headlines as a football player. Seems to me the papers know how to spell your name, too. Well, I've been trying to make them forget me. I think you've arranged that now. I'm giving a little feed over at the store for the girls after practice. Glad to have you join us. Thanks. Meantime, I'll look the team over and see if I can pick up a story. Well, that girl catching over there is Sue Collins. Used to be captain of my old team, the Blues. She can give you the dope on the others. Thanks. I'll see you later. Come on, Pete. I'm coming and I'm coming. Thought you said he was dumb. And why ask him to stick around? A little soft soap washes out a lot of trouble. Hey, uh, I'm Jimmy Jones of the Post. Harris said you'd give me a little dope on the team. Well, first, who are your pitching? Well, I'm... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you signaled for the ball. 
Oh, that's Ann Casey. She's one of our pitchers. Yes, I felt that she must be. I'll talk to her first. Hello, sharpshooter. Still throwing strikes? If the plate's big enough, I get him over. Pete, get a picture. Mark and Ann Casey, all-round girl athlete of Cedar Rapids, now pitching for the New Deal Drug Company. Hey, Casey! Take it in action, just as she throws. Well, how about just let her hold it? I saw her being you. Got it. Now get some of the other kids. Mind if I stand behind you, an umpire? Help yourself. I can't think of a job you'd fit better. until the signal changes. Doggone, I wish I knew the telephone number of that truck that hit me. Better call it. That's all today, kids. Change your clothes and meet at the store. I'll wait and drive you over. You'll cost me one job. This time I can help you. How? Publicity. Can't use it. Oh, wait a minute. Casey, be a good sport and give me a chance to square myself, will you? All right, I'll tell you how you can. How? Stay away from me. You're a jinx. Bad news? It might be. Keep a rod in your pocket. A friend of ours broke jail. Oh, Jimmy, I busted my camera. Twice. Harris just tore up a telegram. I want every piece he dropped, understand? Every piece. Well, why? Listen, I just got a bowling out from Brophy that burned my ears, so I looked Harris up. He didn't come to California just for the rainy season. Now, as soon as everybody leaves, you get busy. Oh, Jimmy, I'll miss that feed. Sure you will, but it won't hurt you. You're getting too fat anyhow. I'd help you, but I got business at the drugstore. Well, how are you kids getting along? I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. Now, naturally, I'd like a winning team. The thing I want most is the best-looking bunch in the league, and I think you kids qualify on that score. Some people put their ads on the back cover of a magazine. I'm putting mine on a baseball diamond. Danny Mascio here is your manager. Sue Collins is your captain. I think they'll treat you right. If they don't, come to me. That's all, and thanks. looking for? Four-leaf clovers? Yeah, uh, something was dropped. Yeah, I can see that. On their head. Yeah. Excuse us, Jimmy. Danny and I want to talk to Foy about the uniforms. Sure. Better have something on your arm. Oh. <laughs> what do you think of this reporter? He seems nice. Get better acquainted. He has ideas. No chance. Ann Casey's the one. Casey, yeah. Yeah, they had some kind of a battle, and he's trying to square himself. I see, and you're figuring on making a pal out of her. Sure. Any objections? No, I think it's a swell idea. She seems like a good kid, and she might help us keep a string on Jones. You know, he bothers me. He's nosy. <laughs> he's all right. You think he might cause trouble for it? No, but my old partner might. He's in jail. He was in jail. I just got a wire. Keep your eyes open. I want to take a look at some of this new liquor. Okay. Goodbye. It's uh, going to be kind of hard to massage your own arm. Now, I'm a graduate masseur. Yes, I imagine you do know all the holes. Now, Casey, I told you before, don't get me wrong. And I've told you before, I don't want to get you at all. I'll call you up. Dial N-O till you're exhausted. <laughs> Find them all? Sure. I'm still hungry. Pete, I've got a hunch about this setup. Yeah, the last hunch you had almost got us both fired. How dare you to tell them apart.
I think we'll blow now, thanks to the fee. Thanks in advance for whatever story appears in your paper. Take a look at our liquor department. The most complete stock in the city. Sure a lot of fun up there, and plenty of headaches, too. Come on in the office a minute. I want to have a talk with you. Pete, wait in the car. I'll be right out. Cigarette? Thanks. Jimmy, you're a smart boy, and I'm going to lay it on the line. The less you say about me in your paper, the better I like it. But I do want publicity for the ball club because I know it'll bring dollars into the store. So whatever you forget about me and print about the girls will be appreciated and remembered. Harris, I'm in the sports department. You're looking for the advertising manager of the paper. He sells space. No hard feelings. I just didn't want you to think I was cheap. I'm used to paying off. I'll give your club all the breaks it deserves and more. But there's no payoff. It's a pleasure to meet a fellow who keeps his hands in his own pockets. Thanks. I'll be running along. You can go out that way. Harris, this is one rap you won't get out of. Stand up and take it. You got away fast. Thanks. That was a close one. Who was it? Had his face covered. I couldn't see. Some old friend, maybe. I don't think so. I suppose this means a front page story. Yes, I guess it might be. Jimmy, I spent all the money I had trying to develop a legitimate business. A story like this would wash me up. What do you want me to do? Forget it ever happened? Give me a break? Well, I do think you ought to call the police for your own protection. I've been taking care of myself for a long time now. Well, I'll just keep this as a souvenir. And I won't break the story without talking to you first. Thanks. When you need a favor, name it. I'll remember that. Testo, Danny. Joe Reddick had the right to open that telegram. Phil Boulder is in town. How do you know? How do I know he was just here? That nosy reporter kept him from burning me down. Here, Sisto. You better try and find him. Okay, boy. Fourth is a jailbreak. The police may pick him up. Then he'd figure the only way to get even would be to talk. That would fix us great. Yeah. For about 25 years apiece, maybe we ought to blow. Not a chance. I've got this deal right where I want it. I've cut prices until every liquor dealer in town is yelling murder. Well, the stuff didn't cost us much. No. And the stamps didn't cost us anything. We made them. We took a chance as long as a bridge. Now the Sunray Company wants to buy us out and take over a whole warehouse full of liquor. They're ready to write out a check. Nobody's going to block this deal. Not anybody. Too bad Baldwin made a break. He doesn't worry me. You think the cops are getting ideas? Cops never did bother me. It's that reporter you said was dumb. Well, I heard he was. And I hope you're right. Because he took Phil's gun. Said he wanted to keep it as a souvenir. Maybe that's all he wants with it. And maybe it isn't. Lieutenant Flanagan? Yeah, come in. I'm Jimmy Jones of the Post. What's on your mind? Lieutenant, I've got clues on something I think's worth cracking. Well, why'd you come to me? Well, my boss once said you were the luckiest detective in this town. Also the dumbest. But that I was even dumber. So between us, maybe we're thick-headed enough to put this over. All right, son, shoot. There are two sets of fingerprints on this gun, mine, and the others belong to a man who tried to commit a murder. I saw it happen, but didn't get a look at his face. Who did he try to kill? This stays under your hat? Sure. Foy Harris. I figured the case was bigger than the story of an attempted shooting. Anything else? Yes. Harris got a wire that worried him. He tore it up and threw it away. I pieced it together, but it's in code. I haven't broken it down yet, but when I do, I'll let you know what's in it. Well, if this bird's prints are registered anywhere in the United States, we'll peg him. Then I'll let you know who he is. Fine. Can I work along with you? You bet. Thanks. And have Milligan take your prints on the way out so we can tell which ones are his. And Jimmy, keep on being dumb. I'm supposed to be stupid, but I'm still the youngest lieutenant on this force. I'll do that. This is certainly one tough code. It isn't the bacon alphabet, and it isn't the null type. I've tried every known system to solve it, and it just won't break down. Well, maybe it ain't in English. Oh, of course it's in English. Not as good as Phil used to make for you. No, but we're doing all right with him. Foy, why don't you get out now? 
You could cash in for a roll. Or that stuff's just plain dynamite. It's counterfeiting. Don't start that again. I want another year before I sell out. Where are those bad ones? I'll get it. Hello, Bedford Apartments. Miss Collins, I call. Sue, come here. What is it? It's Phil Bolger. I recognize his voice. I'm not here. You talk to him. He's in jail. Not now. Here, take it. This is Miss Collins. Who's calling? This is Phil Bolger, Sue. I've got to see you tonight. Ten tonight. Glendale Station. All right, Phil. The platform of the Glendale Station, 10 o'clock tonight. Don't let anybody know you're coming. Not even Foy. I don't want to meet him. You aren't going to. I am. But Foy, you shouldn't. He's... Sore. I know. He thinks he's been gypped. I can straighten him out. Anyway, I do owe him a little something. Don't take a chance, Foy. I've got to. I don't want you here alone, though. He might cross us and come to this place. Who could you drop in on for the evening? Casey, we've got tomorrow's game to talk about. Do that. All right, I'll change. about me. I'll meet you at the store about 11. All right. Hey, Casey. Well, how did you find out where I live? Oh, newspaper men know everything. Some of them think they do. Well, aren't you going to invite me in? No, my apartment wasn't designed to entertain company. Then we'll go out. Like chop suey? Hate it. All right, spaghetti then. I have a game tomorrow. That's what I came to talk about. What about it? I have here the Amazon's lineup. I watched those girls play all last season. I know what they can hit and what they can't hit. I thought that information might be useful. Well, all right. Come on, get your hat on. I'll have you back in an hour. I won't be a minute. Hello, Sue. Oh, I didn't know you were going out. I just dropped by to talk over tomorrow's game. That's just what we were going to do. Why don't you come along? Oh, I don't want to butt in. Then you and I will stay here. Good night, Jimmy. Did you hear that? Now will you go? All right. Baby Ruth, center field. Batted 508 last year. Wow, I've heard about her. I don't doubt it. She's the best girl batter I ever saw. But she has one weakness, a knee-high curve. Keep them there, she'll knock the cover off the ball. That's well of you, Jimmy. It'll help a lot. Looks terrible, but it probably tastes good. Your fortune will read your palm, or you may draw a card for 25 cents. Yes, I'd like one. We'll all take That's all right. You seldom let your real feelings show. Maybe she likes me, then. Your talents are not appreciated. That's exactly what I told my boss. Mm. Did he agree? Sure. He said, what talents? Read yours. I don't like mine. Well, let's have it anyhow. You're in grave danger. Perhaps you can avoid it.
going, Casey? Thanks. The kid's got a lot on the ball. Any way you look at her. Tore my mitt on the wire when I went after that high foul. Get you a new one. Boy. Yeah? I couldn't find my gray tweed coat and my blue slacks this morning. You mislaid them. No, they were there last night. Maybe the woman who cleans up copped them. She hadn't been in the place. Boy. There was an article in the paper today. The way it read, I thought maybe. Sometimes it's better if you just don't think. to play this game. I played a lot of it. I can see that. Since you're going to be the drawing card with this team, I want to make it worth your while. There's a part-time cashier's job open at the store. You work from 10 to 1 and 6 to 11. You start tomorrow. Naturally, it means more dough. Oh, thanks. I'm also going to appoint you captain of the team for publicity reasons. But Sue's captain. I don't want to... Sue's quitting. Her health's bad and she won't admit it. I want her to go away on a trip. So don't you worry about that. Like a gate, you dog. out. You're out. Come on. Next bat. Bat bat. Never mind, kid. I didn't have my eye on the ball. I was watching you and Foy. You told me you were quitting. Said your health's bad. I'm awfully sorry. Did he say that? Yes. And that you ought to take a trip. Maybe I should. Five, five, uh, strike one. Monsu murders Rose up the city. Baby Ruth bats third. You know, Danny, I think you were right about Sue. Yes? Yeah. She could give us an awful headache. That's 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 the try two. Sue's fumble beat Casey out of her tenth strikeout. Hey, Jimmy, don't you think you ought to at least call up the office? your chance to break up the ball game, baby. Well, if she keeps throwing them to me, me hi, I'll do it. All right, let's be here. What's wrong, Sue? Just rattle like this. We'll forget it. We'll take care of the next three. All right, kid. Bear down. I'll hold anything you throw. That's it. Two on base and Baby Ruth up. There goes your ball game. Don't worry about Baby Ruth. I told him how to pitch to her. She's a sucker for a knee-high curve. One. We'll get those two back when we come up. Hmm. Maybe you forgot to tell Baby Ruth she wasn't supposed to hit a knee-high ball. Oh, shut up. This ball game isn't over yet. Out! We haven't lost this ball game yet. 
What happened? Nothing much. Got identification on our friend from the boxcar. Yeah? Who was it? Phil Balter from the Middle West. He was suspected of counterfeiting and burned his place down to hide the evidence when they raided it. So? They sent him up for arson. Was he hooked up with Harrison? The boys back there think they were partners. Well, then you can grab them. On what charge? Oh. Hear from the coroner? No. Did you get a line on that wire yet? Not yet. Why, no hurry. You and I are both dumb. So we work slow. Bat, 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 bat. Batter up. Batter up. Try whistling, Sluggy. It'll come out easier. Cut, 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 cut. Keep quiet. I know. Okay, Louise, it's going out there. That's the strike one. not be interested, but Casey's up with peanuts on first. Watch Casey hit. She's terrific. Looks pretty good. Can't say I blame you. ball game four to three hey i wish you'd hurry up and solve this case whatever it is why well on account of i think we'll both be fired if you don't thanks for the ball game casey nice game both of you how about dinner casey so you're invited too if you're afraid thanks but i have a date i'll meet you at the front gate i haven't said i'd go you haven't said you wouldn't come on step on Had your dinner? No. I want to talk to you. I hear I'm going on a trip. Oh, Casey told you, eh? I didn't get a chance at the game. Listen, kid, I've trusted you with my neck for the last two years. You're about the only person I can trust. Then why get rid of me? I'm not getting rid of you. There's something I want picked up back home that I don't dare let anyone else carry. I can't go myself, so it's up to you. I started that story about your health just to avoid suspicion. I'm sorry, boy. Oh, that's all right. I'll make arrangements for you to leave in a couple of days. I thought you were trying to ditch me. I couldn't stand that. I'd do anything. Skip it. You going back to the apartment. I'll be along in about a half an hour and we'll go someplace. I'm going to keep a string on that house and ask you again. I can't prevent that. Jimmy, Jimmy, what do you think? I got it. I got it. You got it? Got what? Get your breath. What hatched on me? Harris's telegram. It's all worked out. It can't mean much, but it reads. Partner out. Careful. Coming your way. We'll take care of girl when she arrives. Signed, J.R. Who solved it? Anna. The maid that cleans up our room. She can't even speak English. She's Polish. So was the telegram. Say, get in here. We got to find Flanagan. If you don't mind, I'll get out first. I'm sorry, Casey. I didn't think. This is something hot. Well, she's a little hot, too. Hello, Jimmy. It's all right. This is Bill O'Malley. You can talk in front of him. What'd the telegram say? Well, uh, it wasn't in code after all. It was in Polish. Look at that. Doesn't mean an awful lot yet. Well, it says partner coming your way. That hooks him up. Can't you grab Harris now? I don't want to tip him off that we're getting close. And give him a chance to cover up. Well, do you have to see a man murder before you can make an arrest? No, but you got to make the charges stick after you take him. We got a lot of pieces, son, but the edges don't quite fit. Now, if you want to locate something important, find that woman with a gray tweed coat. I'll get a report from the coroner in the morning and telephone you at the paper. Fast. Don't sit down, Jimmy, till you talk the broker. Well, I warned you. He'll be all right when I tell him about the story we're getting. Come on. Mm -mm. I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to keep my hat on. Going to lose one of your sports supporters, Mr. Dugan? I knew that yesterday, and you're not kidding. Hello, boss. Good 
Good morning, Mr. Brophy. Not for you, it isn't. Of course, it's nice of you to visit us for a change. Mary, get in. I'm on a story that's so big I don't dare let go. It's about a murder or something. Yes, it is. You were supposed to be a sports reporter. I've had the society editor covering fights, the house and garden man at a hockey match, while you've been peeking through keyholes looking for a murder. Yeah. Who? Yeah. For you, the coroner's office. Hello? Yes, this is Jimmy Jones. I got the report. Yeah, murder, poison, and by drug is very rare. A chemist had a lot of trouble locating it. That means you can move now. Not yet. I don't want even this much of the story to break until I say the word. All right, I'll see that it doesn't break. What doesn't break? Just as I told you, a murder. Who, when, where? Let me have it. I'll write it myself. Can't give it out yet. You're drawing a salary here. Whatever you find out belongs to this paper. I'll decide whether to hold it back or not. Not this time. Get your check. With pleasure. Jones, when you crack the story, phone it in. If it's good, I'll give you a bonus. Don't let another paper beat us to the street. They won't. I think you'll find, Mr. Raymond, that the Sunray Drug Company has a bargain. We're satisfied, and we feel that we're giving you a fair price for your holdings here. Then everybody's happy. I hope so. Since you're not taking possession until next week, I'd prefer not to make a public announcement of the sale before Monday. That's perfectly agreeable with me if it meets with the approval of our council here. That's quite all right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. In his office, I guess. Wait for me, we'll eat together. All right. Hello? I have a check here for $90,000 drawn on your bank by the Sunray Drug Company. Yes? I'll be over in a few minutes. I'd like to have that money in cash. Yes, I know it's quite a lot, but the check's certified. Well, thank you. I'll appreciate that very much. Oh, hello? Well, it's all arranged. You leave Sunday. I'd rather wait till about Wednesday. It's got to be Sunday. It'll only take you a couple of weeks. I don't think I'm going at all. Why not? Because I've got a job here playing ball. Don't talk like a sap. This is for a new outfit. The Sunray Drug Company. Who told you that? The check's right on your desk. Well? I'm not going for you. I'm staying right here. I'll tell you. We'll both go Tuesday or Wednesday. Let it ride that way for you. But I wouldn't advise you to leave town suddenly, alone. going to lunch. Well, and not here. Our talk has to be private. Listen, I got you over here for a good solid talk about Foy. I'm not interested in him. I know that, but he's interested in you. I've scarcely even talked to him. This is just a friendly boy. I like you, and I know him. Casey, he's not much good. Are you in love with him? I was. Maybe I still am. But when I found out he was shipping me off to Kansas City so I could sell out here and get away alone, I could have killed him. I wonder if that isn't what the wire meant. What wire? A wire I heard about. What did it say? Something about being careful that his partner was headed this way. Was that all? No. The last line was, we'll take care of girl when she arrives. And the signature, I think, was J.R. That would be Joe Raddick. And he would only have one reason for meeting me. Sue, tell me what this is all about. Oh, you wouldn't want to know. But tonight I'm... I'm getting acquainted with the police. Eat your lunch.
wants you to drive her to the police station just as soon as the game's over. What's it all about? I don't know. That's all she told me. Wait at the gate. She's not even going to change. The game's starting. I'll see you later. Hey, Pete, find Flanagan and get him out here right away. Flanagan. Hey, hey, cut, 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 cut it out. Right. One. This is at night. Two. Are you blind? That one hit the middle. But batter out. Out. That's the old speed, Casey. They can't even see it. You send for me, Foy? Yes, take this over to the field and give it to Danny right away. All right. That's all. She's no midget. You want somebody to run for you? What's up? Your boyfriend pulled Bill and me away from a good horseshoe game. Harris's girlfriend wants to talk to the police right after the game. That's all I know, but it sounds promising. Right. Now maybe we'll get somewhere. Nothing but home runs. She does all right. Nice hit, kid. Only next time, don't slide. Pitchers have to be careful. I know how to slide. Boy sent over a new glove. It's about time. This old one's falling apart. Keep right on burning them in. Maybe you can break the strike out there. Ron Ketchum's a Collins girl, isn't she? That's right. She doesn't seem to be worrying about anything. All right, b -b 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 her up. Down the alley, Casey. She couldn't hit it with a broom. There's a doctor in the audience. Will he please come on the field? Call Captain Curtis in the car. Now. Well, can't you do something? Let's get her out of here at least. Not yet. I'm a physician. I'll take charge of those. I'm the team manager. Lieutenant Flanagan, L.A. Detective Bureau. I'll have to hold her equipment until we find out how bad this is. You think it's something serious? 
Yes, it's very serious. She's dead. Dead? Bill, move the body over to the clubhouse and stay there with it till the coroner comes. Can I be of any help? Thanks. I want you girls to stand by for a while. Wait outside of the clubhouse. I've got to phone this in. How much can I spill? Tell them everything you saw. Nothing that you think. I'd say it was heart failure due to overexertion. I think the autopsy will verify that. I was afraid of her health, but she wouldn't quit playing. I know exactly how you feel. Is an autopsy necessary? I'm afraid so. I'd like to send her back to Missouri as soon as possible. That's her home. Well, we can clear things up rapidly for you, I think. Thank you. Dave, you sure this couldn't be something else? It could be a lot of things. Now, the girl had a weak heart, but she persisted in violent exercise. You can't make a mystery out of this, Flanagan. Come on, boys. Dave. Ed? Make a test for the same poison you found in the boxcar case. Well, certainly, Ed, if you say so. But I don't see how it could be administered in the middle of a baseball game before thousands of witnesses. Figuring that out's my job. I'll let you know tonight. I'll be right in your office waiting. Bill, take that stuff down to the coroner's office and stick right with it till I get there. You've got to pick up Harris now. We haven't got a thing on him, unless we can prove that that girl was killed and how it was done. Come on. Hey, you want us anymore? Oh, no. You kids can all go home now. All right, come on, kids. You no. told anyone else about Sue wanting to talk to the police? No. Well, don't. I'll phone you at the store. Jimmy, what's happening? Can't explain now. Later. Same poison. It's murder. I knew it. How? It's here. Where? In the glove, a pin or something. You see. Come in here, quick. Take off your coat. Go off your sleeve. There, that'll fix it. He'll be all right. Didn't get much and had the antidote within 30 seconds. You're pretty lucky, son. I'll say he is. Look at this. In the glove. Ball hitting against it did the work. We can pick up Harris now. You bet. If we can find him. I'll phone the store. Casey may know. Hello? Oh, hello, Jimmy. Listen, is Harris there? No, he went out just a couple of minutes ago. He said he was just going to drive around. He's going out. Didn't say where. We'll hit the apartment. Listen, Casey, you stay right where you are. We've got to find Harris. If you hear where he is, phone into Flanagan's office. What? Well, I'll pick you up as soon as I can. No, no, don't do that. This is dangerous. Sue was murdered. Let's go. Dave, call my office and tell O'Malley to cover that store. Sure, thanks. May, yes. take cash for me for a few minutes. I'll be right back. Sure. those glove switch didn't have a chance there's been a cop sitting on that stuff every minute and that isn't all that reporter and a dick have been parked in the coroner's office for the last two hours boy things may get hot we better blow i think you're right how about our cut it's waiting for you in the office come on
kind of quiet, fellas. I was afraid of something like this, so I passed the word in the store that I was leaving for the night. Well, get your dough. Well, it was a swell racket while it lasted. And we didn't do so bad. We ain't out of it yet. Sure we are. The equipment's all at the bottom of the harbor. There isn't a staff left, except on bottles. And the only people who could talk, well, they had weak hearts. Is that fair? Sure. Yeah, that's swell. Everybody pick their own hideout. We meet in six months. You know where. Good luck. So long, kid. Good luck, Danny. So long, boy. What do you want us for? They'll tell you downtown. Where's Harris? Harris? Why, he left half an hour ago. All right, get in. Come out of there and quick. Doing a little first class snooping, eh? I didn't mean when to. When people I... see and hear too much, things happen to them. You wouldn't. Sure, I would. If you don't think so, just start to yell. That's the easiest way to solve this. There's cops outside. They'd stop a man and they might stop one girl, but they won't stop two, particularly if one of them was you. What do you mean? You walk along with me naturally, and when I get where I'm going, you can yell your head off. All right. And, lady, if you pull anything, I'll give it to you first if it's the last thing I ever do. Put on that raincoat. Nobody you want came out this way. Bill's covering the back. I'll see if Casey knows anything. I'll be with Bill. You stay here. All right. Carry that bag. Remember, if we're picked up, they may think you're working with me. Go ahead. I don't know. I thought she went to the dressing room, but she isn't there. She's been gone quite a while. Watch your step and come on. So far, okay. We'll pick up a taxi around the corner. Got two of them. Harris? No, one of these guys says he's gone. Anything on him? Ten grand. Bill picked up Mashu and Sisto. No sign of Harris. Casey's disappeared. The office is locked. I think we'd better break in. Anybody else pass this way that might have come out of that office? Well, two girls just now. I thought they were cutting through the park. You said the only I know, up. I know, but what they look like. Well, one of them had on a gray coat and... Which way'd they go? Up the street. Come on. the other side. Just a minute, girls. All right, copper. Hold it right there. 
Unless you're bulletproof, let's see that gun of yours on the ground. On the ground, I said. I'm not counting up to three. I don't know that many numbers. Get back on that wheel. We've been looking for a taxi, and this buggy will do just fine. You ride with him. I've always wanted to be a backseat driver. Take care of this guy. Well, that'd be fun. You all right? I am now. How about a ride out to North Hollywood tomorrow? Well, it won't hurt to look. You haven't got anything on me. Oh, no. Just two murders. I'll be in town all day covering that murder trial. If you want anything, phone me there. Say, it's too bad I met a railroad man. Why? Then he could put on your full name, Mrs. Casey Jones. Don't you ever miss? Not a target that big. Bye, darling. Bye. 